you afraid of sharks? Well, have you ever actually met one? With me is someone who's met literally tens of thousands of them. This is Madison Stewart. She's the host of Shark Girl. In fact, she is the Shark Girl. Host of Shark Girl on Smithsonian Channel, documentary coming June the 15th of this year. How did you come by the name Shark Girl? Uh, it was my nickname at school when I was a kid because everyone knew that I loved sharks. And when I got a little older in my hometown in Australia, uh, someone used it as a joke and called me Shark Girl. And then the next day it was in the newspaper as Shark Girl. And it just took off from there. And that's how people know me now. Now, you loved sharks because you had intimate contact with them? Or was this a theoretical thing in your childhood? I've just always been drawn to sharks. So I can't really explain it. I re never remember a time where I wasn't fascinated with them. And then I grew up with them, yeah. I had more contact with them than any other animal, yeah. Do you remember your first shark encounter, or was that so far back in your childhood that it's always been part of your life? No, I'll always remember it. Uh, my first shark encounter on scuba is probably the most prominent memory I have. Before I'd seen them snorkeling and stuff, but on scuba was pretty amazing. It was my 12th birthday in Byron Bay in Australia at Julian Rocks, and I was diving with grey nurse sharks. and. You can read as many books as you want about them, but seeing them in real life for the first time, nothing can prepare you for that. Their size and their features, it was just pretty amazing to be next to this animal. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, nurse sharks are pretty passive, right? They like to spend a lot of time on the bottom, not uh, the free-swimming predators that we normally think of yeah. when we think of sharks. Yeah, exactly. They're like the Labradors of the sea. What other myths do you think most people have about sharks? So many. <laughs> I think uh, people think that if there's a shark in the water on the day and it sees a human, it's going to turn around and attack a human straight away. That's not it at all. Like Most of the sharks I see underwater, if they come across divers, they'll freak out and run away. So it's actually a matter of us drawing sharks closer. There's also this thing about sharks being attracted to human blood, but I've you know cut my hand on coral in the past on scuba dives on shark feeds, and they've had no reaction to that. So really, we've based our knowledge of sharks on things like jaws and there's so many myths about their behavior and their personality, which just aren't true. Mm -hmm. Are there any species of shark that you are a little apprehensive about or that you think twice about before getting in the water with them? No species of shark would make me you know, apprehensive getting in the water. There's definitely personalities of certain sharks that you need to gauge. Mm -hmm. uh, there are species that are more renowned for certain things and certain hunting habits than other species. but. Really, uh, I would get in the water with any species. It's difficult to explain that. Yeah, like I said, you just look at the personality of them. And there's really no, you know, sharks aren't harmless and never say that. But when you know enough about each particular species, then you can kind of figure out what you're doing in the water. And they each have separate tells, like great whites and tiger sharks are different in the way they behave and the way they let you know they want you out of their territory and things like that. Is it related at all to size? Will a predator attack something that's about its size? Uh, usually in the water when we've got a bait box in there, so a box full of like fish heads and mm -hmm. there's sharks around, the sharks are very curious towards us, but they're these big macro predators and the, the biggest thing that they show is caution, which is really impressive. So even like I was little in the water when I started diving with sharks and these huge animals would flinch, you know, as soon as we made eye contact and they would be really cautious towards me, which made me feel big. So yeah, I loved it. But certain species more than others, you know that you're not in control underwater. You feel that they're the dominant predator and they're the boss. Mm. Yeah. So it's not how big you are, it's how, you, how big you believe you are. Yeah, underwater, it's all you're judged purely on the senses that sharks can pick up. So if you're calm, they know that. If you're having a bad day, they know that. They pick up your energy and all their senses are, are made to hunt things that are weak or scared. So if you don't have that underwater, you're, you're pretty safe and you, it's a really nice, calm environment most of the time. Right. Now, you're also underwater with gear, with cameras, with scuba equipment, some of which is shiny. Is it a myth that sharks are attracted by shiny things or be made more aggressive by a lot of flickering lights in the water? That's not a myth. It's actually an attraction method sometimes using shiny objects because uh, of fish scales and things like that. Sharks can be attracted to it. Um, you know, there are rules when you're feeding sharks of not waving your hands around because it looks like bait. I mean, they're not going to like attack you, you know, like man eaters, that whole myth thing that you've got. But there are little precautions you have to take because they're not going to distinguish the difference between a dead piece of fish and your hand. So. Yeah, little things like that. We don't really worry too much about it. I mean, I'd be more worried about barracuda seeing shiny rings and coming to bite your finger or something like that. Sure. You're an Aussie. 
Yeah. Which means you grew up near the Great Barrier Reef of Earth. What's it like growing up around the Great Barrier Reef? It was my childhood obsession, you know. I still close my eyes and see the reefs there, and it's like a dream. I was so dwarfed by these giant reefs that I was diving as a kid there and the things that I was seeing, but it was also a huge eye-opener for me. People have this foreign perception of the Great Barrier Reef where you see it on TV and it's this beautiful, colourful, rich, diverse thing, but it's also got a dark side. There are parts of the reef that are disappearing or being destroyed and the main thing in Shark Girl is the realisation of shark fisheries in the Great Barrier Reef, which is something that changed my life in shark conservation. Probably the first reason I got into it, it was the realisation that the sharks I grew up diving with were being targeted for their meat and their fins and sold to people in Australia. Yeah. And that was an issue that I couldn't ignore. Give me some statistics. How many sharks of what species are, are being decimated? What's near the brink of extinction, if anybody? So there's 600 tonnes of shark a year taken from wow. the Great Barrier Reef, and 80% of that is from within the Marine Park and World Heritage Area. So it's poaching? It's a legal shark fishery, completely yeah. legal, and the government approves it and fisheries approves it, and wow. it goes through reviews, and they continue fishing species of sharks while knowing nothing about them and whether or not it's sustainable. It's the kind of fishery that you would never see happen to any other animal because it's just so, they're fishing blind and there's not enough science behind it. Mm -hmm. But it's happening to sharks because there's no social pressure for people wanting to protect sharks. So it's, it's one of those things where I talk to people and say, did you know that this is happening? They go, no way, they have no idea. They're watching this beautiful Great Bay Reef documentary on the television and then the next day they go to the supermarket and they can buy shark from the Great Barrier Reef. You know, it's, it's like Jurassic Park out there. The sharks are these amazing creatures. To see one on a dive on the Great Barrier Reef, it's the one thing that people want to see. Uh, and for them to then go into an Australian supermarket and be sold as meat, mm -hmm. it's an incredible thing that's happening. Yeah. You are up close and personal with a lot of coral reefs. Have you seen changes in your admittedly short lifetime? Do you see evidence of climate change in the reef? Definitely. There's areas of the reef deteriorating from bleaching, climate change. Uh, the biggest one I've seen is, of course, the loss of predators. So there's been reefs that have been beautiful and vibrant, and everything from the tiniest little you know, pipe fish to the big fish, uh, all of it is affected by things like the removal of sharks. So I've seen reefs with sharks and then gone back just a year later in the exact same time of the year, and there's been no sharks. And the image of the reef that follows that is it, it's deteriorated. It's quite amazing the effect that taking out the predators have. So there's beautiful, amazing areas of the Great Barrier Reef, but there's also areas that are now quite severely in trouble 